Chapter 3 Dippy's Story Harry and Jensen had walked their way back onto home ground and now that the job had been successfully completed and with somersaulting endorphins bouncing around their heads they were exchanging excited banter. I tell you Jen, I thought you were going to go over with that bike laughed Harry who had now fully recovered from his first ever guilt trip. Jensen shook his head and flicked his fallen ginger blonde hair from his eyes. Nah, no way, Harry. I was totally in control. Oh, really? And the Pope's Jewish, mocked Harry. Well, you should know, Harry. You go to church often enough. Yeah, but it's not by my own choice, is it? I suppose not. Or so you say, Father Harry, smirked Jensen as his mother wasn't as strict a Catholic as Harry's mother, so he didn't have to go to church at all. At least I'll get to see heaven, Jen. Sooner than you think if you don't put a shift on. And he grabbed Harry and pulled him out of the way of a cow that was trotting past in the middle of the road. Giddy up, giddy up, shouted its young rider, as he tapped the animal's sides with his heels. The cow broke into a clumsy, lumbering run, and then disappeared out of sight into a garden. Hey, up! What's this then? asked Jensen, totally ignoring the Kaunitz rider and pointing towards Johnny Dip, who was wandering aimlessly in their direction with half a cabbage stuck to his t shirt. Now then, Dippy lad, what's been happening to you then? Has your friend Jim been leading you astray again? Jensen was referring to the well-known fact that Dippy had no friends, so he'd created one. Jim, his invisible friend. Dippy looked embarrassed and stammered. F -f 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 very f -f funny, m -m -m Mark. Don't call me Mark, protested Jensen, for he hated his real name. Mark Jensen was just not cool enough, so he'd changed it to something much cooler. It's Jensen. Jensen the Interceptor. You know, after the car, the Jensen Interceptor. S -s Sorry, J -J Jensen the, the, the uh, in Interceptor? Uh, b -b -b but my name's J -J Johnny Dip, N not Dippy. Johnny, Dippy, Dippy, Johnny. What's the bloody difference? said Jensen, who then mimicked Dippy's stutter. J -j 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 Johnny, d -d 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 Dip, is it? How are people supposed to know that when you can't even say it right yourself? Uh, I don't know, conceded Dippy, shrugging his shoulders. Come on, Jen, interrupted Harry. Let's not hang about, eh? we better get this stuff back to my house before the cops start sniffing about. Jensen was shocked and gestured towards the overly tall, odd-looking boy with the bright red bushy hair. Harry just smiled and looked at Dippy. Oh, don't worry about him, Jen. I reckon he's okay. He won't say anything. Maybe he won't. But what about his invisible friend, Jim? Sniggered Jensen. Dippy was embarrassed again. Ha 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 ha. Very f funny, m m Mark. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I mean J Jensen, the, the interrupter. Um, intersexer. Uh, I mean masturbator. Uh, Jensen, Jensen, the masturbator. Harry couldn't help laughing at Dippy's Freudian slip, but Jensen wasn't amused. He thrust the bag of stolen bicycle parts into Dippy's midriff. Here you half wit. You might as well make yourself useful. Carry these. Dippy smiled though. F -f Thank you. He knew if he was polite there was a chance, albeit an outside chance, that these could be his very first real friends. Uh, you're welcome, replied a confused Jensen and they set off walking again, with Dippy struggling to carry all the parts and falling behind. After a few minutes, with Dippy far enough in the distance, the question that Harry had been waiting for eventually came. Uh, 
What's Dippy's story then? Asked Jensen as innocently as he could. Harry tried to delay the inevitable. What are you asking me for? How should I know? I've never even spoken to him before. Come, Moffat Harry. Your mum knows everybody's business. She's famous for it, for God's sake. Well, I might know something, conceded Harry. I thought you might. Now come on, spill the peas. Harry ignored the incorrect phrase. He'd known Jensen nearly all of his almost 14-year-old lifetime, and he knew he was a good deal smarter than he'd have you believe. And so he scratched his tanned shoulder through his then-fashionable capped-sleeved T-shirt and took a deep breath. OK then, Jen. You asked for it. But hold on to your hat, because this one's well far-fetched. Yeah, but coming from your mother, it would be, wouldn't it? Sniggered Jensen. Well, anyway, never mind that. You've got to promise me that you won't tell anyone, ordered Harry. Yeah, of course I promise not to tell anyone. Cross me out and spit in your eye. And Jensen spat in the air to back this up. I wish you wouldn't do that, Jen, you dirty git. Harry looked back again to check that Dippy was still well out of earshot. He was having some kind of argument with himself, or more likely, his invisible friend Jim. And seeing this, he began. Now then, once upon a time, on the Braithwaite estate. Cut it out, Harry. Tell us properly, will ya? All right, all right. Keep your hair on. And so, Harry took a deep breath and began again. You must have heard some stories about him, Jen. Yeah, some. I know he sees a psychiatrist, and he lives off dead rats and mice and stuff like that. Oh, and he runs around his house in belly shoes and a tutu. <laughs> He's not quite that bad. He's just a little bit odd, that's all. And it's supposed to have been his mum that sent him that way. You see, he never sees his dad. He left when he was a young child, so I don't think he even remembers him. Why? What happened to his father? Hold your horses, Jen. One thing at a time. I'll get to that bit in a minute. Sorry, Harry. Carry on. Harry composed himself yet again. Right then. Where was I? Ah, yeah. His mother's had a boyfriend or ten since his father left the scene. And Dippy, well, I suppose he's always going in the way a bit. Anyway, when he was younger... His mother wanted him out of the way. So she locked him in his room for most of the day. So he did what a lot of kids do. He invented a friend. Jim, chirped Jensen. Yep, the famous Jim, confirmed Harry. Suddenly, it all made sense to Jensen. Well, where's his father now? He should be told. I mean, that's not right, is it? I think he already knows, Jen. But well, why don't he do anything about it? That might be a bit difficult. Why? He's not dead or something, is he? No, he's not dead or something. He's in prison. Whoa, in prison? Why? What's he done? Asked Jensen in a very loud voice. Harry grimaced and looked back at Dippy. Jensen? Keep your bloody voice down, will ya? Dippy will hear ya. And anyway, it's not what he's done. It's what he's attempted to do. What? What's he attempted to do? Murder. Whoa! Um, I mean, whoa. This time, Jensen stopped dead in his tracks. He'd heard stories and gossip emanating from Harry's mother before but never anything as dramatic as this. Heavy duty or what? Who did you try and kill in Harry? His wife. Dip his mother, replied Harry, solemnly. Jensen stopped again, and this time his mouth fell agape. Whoa! 
does Dippy know all of this? Harry turned quickly and pointed a finger at Jensen. No, no, he doesn't know. He doesn't know any of it. So not a word to anyone. They reckon that if he knew, it would send him over the edge or something. Have you got that, Jen? Jensen hesitated. He was still struggling to absorb all the information. Yeah, yeah. It goes without saying, Harry. I won't say a word, not to anyone. Never, ever, ever. But somehow, Harry didn't believe him. Are you sure about that, Jen? Look, Harry, I promise. Cross me heart and spit in your eye. Harry anticipated Jensen's next action and ducked. But the spit fell on a woman passerby and Jensen's face dropped. Ah, oh, shit. Run!